Good morning. It's Bernard Nomberg. I'm here with my buddy Tim Clay. Uh, we're here on another Tuesday to talk about an area of, uh, not talking about the law today, we're going to talk about an area of, of accounting. And Tim, good morning, and I appreciate you being on with me this morning. Glad and, you got me here, Bernard. And thank you for inviting me on to, to your firm here. Welcome. Um, Tim is a, a local accountant, all around great dude, and uh, Tim's going to share some, some good information with us. Uh, Tim, I, I think we've known each other probably going on about 20 years now, hadn't we? Long time. Playing yeah. some pickup hoops at the at the J. Yeah. Man's got the sharpest elbows I've ever, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Don't leave them free for the uh, corner or top of the circle uh, two-pointer. Right. Every once in a while, but <laughs> <laughs> Tim, tell us a little bit about your background and, and who, who, who you are and, and where you're from. Okay. Uh, Tim Clay, uh, originally from Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, one of six kids. I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. Uh, went into accounting, um, went to Oakwood College up in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. That's how I ended up in Birmingham, started mm -hmm. working with a telephone company mm -hmm. and actually started doing the accounting work on the side. Mm -hmm. Did it on the side for about 10 years. Then I went full time working out of my house. Mm -hmm. And since 98, I have been out of my house working in an office. Sure. We've been able to grow our practice by acquiring other uh, accounting firms and mm -hmm. tax firms, and just by organically growing. Okay, and tell us about tell us about ABC. What's ABC? ABC is Accounting and Business Consultants. Mm -hmm. I think when I first thought of that name, I wanted to make make it simple, mm -hmm. make it easy, mm -hmm. uh, make it clear. Uh, somewhat like law, accounting is something that people need, but they don't necessarily want. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, so it's like a necessary evil. Uh, when people start talking about or hearing tax information, their mm -hmm. eyes start glazing over. So right. the whole idea was to make it easy, efficient, reasonably priced, mm -hmm. and very user-friendly, client-friendly mm -hmm. as we work with our clients. Okay. We... Um, Mainly in our office, we work with small businesses. Mm -hmm. you know, so we mm -hmm. do a lot of accounting work, some bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. We do corporate taxes. Uh, we do some IRS representation work. Sure. When someone has tax problems, we'll represent them before the IRS. Sure. But we have another location in Bessemer that mm -hmm. is pretty much a retail shop. Okay. All they do is pretty much individuals. They do a lot of representation over mm -hmm. there. My business partner works over there, Derek Ferrier. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's more seasonal. Our business is year-round. Okay. And where are we? Where's your, your firm located? Okay, I'm in lovely Avondale. Okay. <laughs> and uh, if folks uh, either watching this live or, or later on when they see replays of it, how can they get in touch with you? Okay. Uh, our location is 4120. Second Avenue South. Okay. Uh, we're in Unit B. We're on the second floor. We're in an old city of Birmingham firehouse. Right. It is a neat building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a food truck business on the first floor. And our phone number is 205-425-9000. And is the, the phone number the best way to get in touch with you all, or do you have uh, either uh, a website or Facebook or, or email? Website is uh, ABC consultants.com so it's abc c o n s u l t a n t s dot com okay. and facebook uh instagram is just going to be accounting and business consultants sure sure okay uh well tim we're now in the fourth quarter of the the fiscal year and let's talk a little bit about what are some good tips for individuals doing some tax planning as we're getting closer toward the end of the year? I mean, the low-hanging fruit, probably the easiest one that I always suggest is funny. My wife was doing it today, mm -hmm. was uh, giving away, like, non-cash items to mm -hmm. a Hannah Holmes, a Salvation Army. So donations. Donations. Okay. But it, if you think it's going to be over $500, mm -hmm. which hopefully you can reach that plateau, right. Right. then you want to itemize it. Sure. You know, right. and, and the more you itemize it, then the more you'll be able to write off. Okay. You know, so it's a good opportunity to maybe clean out the house for clothes and appliances mm -hmm. and TVs and electronic goods okay. that you aren't using. Sure. And if you paid, say, 4000 for all of it, you could probably write off 1000 1500 you know, as for market okay. value. Is that, that was going to ask you, is there a rule of thumb as to how to determine the fair market value of whatever items you may be donating. Generally, I'll say 25 to 33%. Okay. Is, is what okay. I would say 
if it's just an average condition. I mean, if, if you've got something that's brand new and you never used it, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say maybe 20% off of it or something like that. Do, do you necessarily need to keep the receipts for items? I mean, it's, I, I realize when you're donating clothes, you're not going to necessarily keep all your receipts. Mm -hmm. But let's say you bought a TV four years ago. It, it works, but it's no longer one you, all, you use. Is it necessary to keep receipts? In that situation, I would say no. Okay. But if it's in the situation that I said where maybe this TV, mm -hmm. I haven't used it, right, and it's maybe still in the box or sure. something, then it would be okay. Well, that makes sense to keep it. Okay. Any other uh, things besides donations at this last quarter of the year for individuals to, to well, be thinking about? I think another thing is if uh, you work for someone mm -hmm. and if you have, um, if they have like a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, if you can contribute to either the 401k or the IRA or the SEP mm -hmm. or whatever, sure, that's a way to reduce, you know, your income, mm -hmm. putting money away for the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I consider that low-hanging fruit, too. But, of course, going into Christmas, people are spend, spending money on others. Sure, <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough call for yeah. some folks. Yeah. Uh, but, and some of these plans, like the retirement plans or the SEP plans, you can donate up through next tax year, ne next tax day. Exactly. That'll still count for the current exactly. fiscal year, right? Exactly. Okay. And that's, that's an excellent point. So then mm -hmm. if you if you know you want to do it, you mm -hmm. could have it set up mm -hmm. and then contribute before you file your tax return. Okay. Well, uh, one thing that just came to mind is uh, that I don't know the answer to is what about prepaying some of your taxes? Would that be a... a something to do at this point in the year or, or what's what's your typical advice on the on, on an, an average person well by law you're supposed to pay 90 percent of whatever your tax that's due by december 31st okay if you prepay taxes that's not a deduction mm -hmm. so there's no real advantage to prepaying your taxes okay uh but i would say you would like to have an idea now, if and I guess that that ninety percent only comes in if maybe you're getting extra income from sources and it's not being taxed. Sure, maybe sure. K one income or mm -hmm. some dividend or interest income. Okay, uh, that might make a difference. But if basically if all your income is W two, mm -hmm. I mean you sh you should be okay. Okay, what what about folks who may be receiving uh, bonuses or pay increases before the end of the year? Any general advice about how folks should treat that? I would say based on the higher your income, probably the higher the tax you want to withhold on it. Mm -hmm. you okay. know? So it's it's not like if you get a $20,000 bonus Christmas day or, you know, Christmas week. Right. You, you're not going to have much time to, to generate deductions against <laughs> Right, right. You know, so you probably, you know, might want to just... It, it may look good when you first receive it, but you need to make sure you plan ahead yeah. is, is what you're saying. And, and that might be an opportunity if you haven't uh, fully uh, funded your retirement, you mm -hmm. might take some of that money, certainly that bonus money, and actually certainly, put it certainly. in your retirement. Well, let, let's shift a little bit away, uh, Tim, from individuals, and let's talk about small businesses and their planning in this fourth quarter. Okay. Any general ideas or, or suggestions for small business owners? Well, what we tend to do... Um, with most of our monthly clients is, and we've pretty much already done it by now, we may have a few stragglers, Sure, is we try to have their annual income statement compiled, let's say this is November, at least through October, maybe September. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll look at what they did the previous year, Sure, kind of see what they're doing this year, mm -hmm. and actually talk to them and see, say for example, I got a client that sold uh, a piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty significant. Right. So it's like, well, okay, we're going to need to do A, B, C mm -hmm. to try to <laughs> make sure that you're not looking at this six-figure tax bill. Right, right. Well, I, I assume that the more proactive the business owner is, uh, the less uh, surprises there may be from a tax standpoint later Exactly. On. And now we have time to do something about it. Right. And hopefully mm -hmm. if you've made this big sale, mm -hmm. you have some cash to maybe... You know, do, do some, something with do some proper planning. If we wait to tax season or wait to March, you know, come through Christmas. <laughs> That's, and, right. That's right. <laughs> You're looking at me like, you know, why'd you tell me? <laughs> yeah, I did tell you. You just didn't listen <laughs> yeah, to you me. You want to spend that money. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand. 
Uh, Tim, let's let's take it away from individuals. Let's take the, our questions away from small businesses. And I don't know how you you differentiate f from a, an accounting standpoint, small versus larger businesses. Let's now talk about big businesses and, and give us a definition of a big business. Uh, not not necessarily one of your clients' names, but I mean, what would be a, like a, a, a fifty uh, employee company or, or or larger? Or is there any real principles that change from a small business to a big business other than you may be talking about bigger numbers? Yeah, I think that uh, ideally, theoretically, a big business, you have more to play with. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I'm mm -hmm. doing a 10% margin on a million dollar business, you know, that's mm -hmm. 100, <laughs> you know, right. You know, if I'm doing it on a $10 million business, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's a million. So obviously you have more, uh, potential income that you can do things with, mm -hmm. you know, you can have maybe, um, I mean, I like, and I'm sure you understand like C corporations versus S corporations and mm -hmm. with C corporations is my understanding that there's a lot of like benefits you can mm -hmm. put in those corporations, sure. you know? And so if you have a lot of cash flow in your business, you can have maybe an education plan for mm -hmm. your employees or for yourself. Or mm -hmm. Always you want to uh, hire your children if possible. Sure. You know, it always sure. amazes me when I look at uh, the car dealership commercials mm -hmm. and you see their children on there. Certainly. And it's like, I know they're getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And it makes That's sense. Right. You know, you pay them, put it in their retirement <laughs> fund and sure. not their, their college fund. And, sure. You know, sure. And you write it off in the business. <laughs> Tim, any, any changes in the laws this past year that folks may not be aware of or, or, or that you foresee coming that are in your industry, people talking about changes in the laws that may be affecting folks? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, uh, the tax law now that's uh, coming, is it is going to happen, mm -hmm. I think, because um, there's two, I mean, you have, say, for example, the mortgage interest deduction or the local tax where we pay our state taxes, that mm -hmm. deduction, or the property tax deduction. Some of those are controversial. It hasn't been settled yet. They're talking mm -hmm. about getting rid of some of them. But I think the thing that I know is gonna happen is, I'm pretty sure they're gonna double the uh, standard deduction. Mm -hmm. So if you're married and you currently have a standard deduction of 12,000, mm -hmm. it's gonna go to 24. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about getting rid of that personal exemption, mm -hmm. that 4000 per person sure. and per child that you get. So it's still, I, I'm pretty sure both of those are going to happen, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. They're talking about, so, so for example, if you have four kids and you're getting 4000 per kid and that's 16000 Right. I think they're going to do something with the child tax credit to mm -hmm. kind of not hit you too hard. Right. Um, I think generally speaking... Most of middle America will enjoy some kind of tax cut. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be overwhelming. It could sure. be 400 to 1500 or something. Mm -hmm. you know? So in, until the laws are actually changed, is there any planning that folks should be doing? No, I, none that I can think mm -hmm. of because it's my understanding that it's so late that I don't think that any of the tax law changes are going to be for 17. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be effective for 18. For 18. Okay. Well, that's all great information, Tim. I appreciate your expertise and sharing that with us. Uh, if folks want to reach you, uh, again, tell us tell us how to get in touch with you. Our phone number is 205-425-9000. Uh, and uh, we're at uh, abcconsultants.com. And uh, Facebook and Instagram, it's Accounting and Business Consultants, Inc. Well, Tim, I, I certainly appreciate you sharing your knowledge today and and i think that'll wrap us up for for today well thanks but uh, guys i thank you for sharing some time with us this morning uh we've had my buddy tim clay on talking some general uh, excellent accounting tips and information of course you can find us every tuesday here at, at 10 o'clock central uh we'll be back again next week with another area of the law if you want to reach david or me at our firm we're at nonberglaw.com 205-930-6900. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Take and don't, don't oh. let that uh, demeanor <laughs> fool you. He's a monster on the court. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about this on another day. <laughs>